Well, good evening. Good to see each one out tonight on this uh, Wednesday night. Uh, it's been a beautiful day, and uh, we just come expecting to uh, know the Lord's here with us. And uh, I just expect Him to do something great in the service tonight. If He's willing, if we're obedient. So uh, tonight as we begin our service, we'll go to prayer, and uh, I know there's several requests uh, that we need to pray about. Uh, my granddaughter-in-law sent me a text a while ago, and she's got a friend, actually the friend uh, is from Clinton County, but uh, she had surgery a few days ago, and she's had complications now, and she's in critical care, really needs a uh, touch from the Lord. Uh, continue to remember uh, Brother Kenny Wilson. Kenny is, uh, he's just not feeling well. Uh, remember Darren, as he's going back to Lexington Mark. Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Coffey, he uh, had his PET scan today, and uh, in the morning he meets with the uh, uh, chemo doctor, the radiation doctor, and the cancer doctor. So we just pray that uh, the cancer is just confined to that uh, esophagus, and there's nowhere else in his body, and uh, these uh, treatments will take care of it. Any others that you want to mention tonight? Terry Robertson, okay, remember that request. Rudy Hickenbottom. Okay, all right, remember that request. Not just for several days, but like just in the last few days. Okay, remember Shirley. Okay, remember, remember those requests. <coughs> Any others? Yes. Yes, remember that request. Okay, yes, remember, remember that request. Others? Yes, definitely we need to lift up our nation in prayer. Yes, Sister Judy Hope. Yes. Okay, remember Derek Vaughn. And Christy always uh, quotes prayer for Bobby Stephen to her dad, so remember, remember him. And remember the ones that uh, not only needs a physical healing but a spiritual healing. So any others, or unspoken requests, just with a lift of the hands, would you stand with us as we pray? Father God, Lord, we come to you tonight and. Father, you've heard the cares and concerns as we've shared the ones that's standing in need of prayer. So many, God, that's going through this dreaded disease, cancer. But, God, you're bigger than any cancer. You, you're bigger than, you are the great physician. So, God, we just we place these requests at the foot of the cross. And I thank you that we serve a God that still hears and answers our prayers. God, that just reaffirms our faith when we just stop and think. Just think about the prayers that you've already answered for us. And even now, you're working on these that we've mentioned tonight. So, God, we just thank you and give you praise for that. And, Lord, for this service tonight, I pray, God, that you would be with Brother Daniel as he speaks tonight. God, just anoint him anew and afresh. And 
I pray that you'd give each one of us open, receptive minds and hearts to your word. That that word would lodge in our hearts. And Lord, help us to be a better disciple. Be the disciple that you've called us to be. And Lord, for everything that's said and done tonight, it's for your honor and your glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Join us with us as sing now. Praise God. Let's sing. I have somebody with me. Trouble and care Ring on 
continue to worship now with our giving. Brother Joe, would you stand and just bless the offering, please? Amen. Stacy's going to sing for us, but while he's coming, uh, does anybody have a word of praise, a testimony you want to share tonight? Yes. Amen, yes. The Bible says he daily daily loads us with benefits anyone else while he's getting ready okay well let's stay the same then Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing! Saint it dead, rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with him to be. All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh. Savior in the sky. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the hymns will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be, praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! On that morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Million there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky.
We've got a special treat tonight. Brother Daniel's going to preach for us. So Brother Daniel, come on at this time. Give him a good hand tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord tonight. Amen. God is in the house. I brought him with me. Amen. It's good to be in his house tonight and to just have an opportunity to share with you what's on my heart. Uh, when Brother Eric texted me a couple of nights ago and asked me to speak today, I just thought I want to share with you what the Lord's been dealing with me. Um, so I'm just opening up my heart to you all tonight. If you have your Bibles, uh, Matthew 26, verse 38. Matthew 26, verse 38. That's where we're going to read from tonight. If you don't care to stand for the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 26, verse 38. Jesus is speaking and he says, Then he saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. He said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Father God, I just thank you for your word tonight, and I thank you for the anointing that, that breaks every yoke. And I, I thank you, God, that we've had another opportunity to come into your house and to worship you and to glean from your word and to fellowship with our, with our brothers and sisters and you, God. I ask, God, that tonight you hide me behind your cross, God. May you give me the words to speak, God. And, and I thank you for the anointing, and I thank you for your touch tonight, and I thank you for this message. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Tonight I want to take the thought about tearing, tearing, tearing until. I guess if you could give it a title, tearing, tearing until. Um, Jesus um, is in our scripture here talking to the disciples, and, and he says, tarry with me, tarry with me. And tarry is defined as to stay, to stay somewhere longer than expected, to delay leaving, to abide, to linger, or to wait for. Tarry is to stay somewhere longer than expected, delay the leaving, abide, linger, or wait for. And I can think, and I'm sure you can think of situations in which family members that you went to go visit them, or uh, you may have not seen them in a while, and they, they said, can you stay just a little longer? Will you stay just a little longer? Um, I think when I was, you know, when we live in Somerset now, we come over to see Dad, and Dad would always say, can't you just stay a little longer? Can't you let those kids just stay a little longer? That's what tarrying is. And um, I'm sure you can think of a time in which you've had that in your life. Well, Jesus asked the disciples to tarry. And in our scripture tonight, I'm going to read uh, 36 through 44 of Matthew 26. He asked us to tarry in prayer. Jesus is uh, going into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he is getting ready to face the most critical event of his life and the most important event for ours. Verse 36 says that Jesus come unto the place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him, he took with him three, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38 says, He said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and Jesus fell on his face, and he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. He cometh unto, the, cometh unto the disciples, and he findeth them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, verse, verse 41, that you enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, verse 42, and he prayed. And he said, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, Except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came again, and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and he went away again, and he prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he cometh to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. What a week it had been for Christ. 
Palm Sunday had just happened. The Last Supper. He knew what he was getting ready to face. And before the betrayal and eventual crucifixion, at a pivotal moment in his life, he asked three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to tarry, to abide, to wait for him, to watch while he went to pray. Yet he found them asleep three different times. Undoubtedly, Jesus was looking for someone to not just watch for him, but to watch with him. And as he spoke earnestly to his father concerning the will for his life, he was waiting for his brothers in Christ, his disciples, to watch with him. Scriptures tell us that, as the song said tonight, that his sweat became like drops of blood. And he is calling us to tarry in prayer. That's what he said, watch and pray. He wants us to tarry in prayer. And I just think of times of tarrying in the altars. And tarrying until something broke. Tarrying until something happened. In the Spirit, you can feel that. When people are praying in the altars and you're praying with them and you're tarrying, you're pushing, you're praying, you're seeking God's face, you can feel when there's a breakthrough. You can feel when God is moving. He is calling us to tarry in prayer. These are the things that God's been dealing with me on because I don't feel like I've been tarrying enough. He calls us to tarry until endued. Tarry un until endued. Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. He said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as the Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. They were tarrying, just as he said. He had said, tarry until you be endued with power from on high. Jesus, right here, right after the resurrection, and as he's on the road with Emmaus and on forth in that scripture, he's expounding on the events of his life, including his death and resurrection. And he goes on to tell his disciples that they had been chosen to carry the gospel of him to all the world. After this, he tells them to wait at Jerusalem, to be endued or, or clothed upon with power from heaven. Jesus ascends up into glory. However, a few days after he ascends, his disciples find themselves in this world, undoubtedly scared, hunted. They, their name was not good at that time, and there was a big job to be done. Those followers of Jesus, however, took him seriously, and they returned to Jerusalem, and they waited for Jesus to fill them. When He did, they went into all the world and they touched it for the Lord. Acts 17 and 6 says that they were known as world changers. It says that these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. We have to tarry until we're endued with power from on high. They were able to accomplish great feats. They were able to turn the world upside down because they had done what Jesus had told them to do. They tarried until He empowered them. He wants us to tarry in prayer. He wants us to tarry until He empowers us and endues us with, from power on high. Acts 1, 3-5 says, To whom also He shewed Himself after His passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And on into Acts 2, 1 through 4 says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and one accord. 
Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They tarried until they were endued. We have to tarry until we're endued with power. We have to tarry until he, to, to evangelize. He promises that He will be good to those who wait. Lamentations 3.25 says that the Lord is good unto them that wait for Him, to the soul that seek, seeketh Him. We need to tarry until we're endued with power. I think uh, nearly 26 years ago, since 24, yeah. 26 years ago when I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was thinking about Sister Sue Meadows and how she tarried with me. And others too. But Sister Sue, bless her heart, I feel like she tarried and tarried. And, And people are relying on us to tarry. They're relying on us to tarry for them. I I was relying on her. I may have not known at the time. I may have. But I was relying on her. People are relying on us to tarry. When we experience Him, we want to tarry with Him. Uh, The the Samaritan woman in John 4, 44, excuse me, John 4, 40 through 42, uh, she had shared with Jesus. She shared about this man. She said, come see this man. And uh, when the Samaritans were coming to Him, This is verse 40 of John 4. They besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Verse 42 says, The woman said, Now we believe, not because of what you said, but we believe for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. The Samaritan woman carried the gospel to the townspeople. But when they encountered Him, when they experienced Him, when they sat down with Him, they said, tarry with us. Tarry with us just a little longer. Stay with us just a little longer. When we tarry with Him, there is a desire, a burning desire in our heart where we want to just stay longer in His presence to tarry with Him. Tarrying has powerful effects. I think of Paul and Silas in Acts 16, verses 25-26. through We sang about it tonight. It says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They were in prison. And they sang praises unto God. And the the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. They, in the prison cell, they tarried. They had no other option but to tarry. Sometimes we're in a situation like that. Where we feel like we have no other option but to tarry. Where we are in chains, we're in bondage, but we need to keep tarrying. When we tarry, things happen. I think of the jailer and his family. As I said earlier, someone is relying on us to tarry for him. The jailer and his family, they got saved that night. They were in a situation that was like no other. No one would have expected that. No one would have expected these two that were thrown in jail to have such a powerful effect that very night. But the two were, many were saved that night because they chose to tarry even in the darkest hour, even in the darkest night, they chose to tarry. We need to be a tarrying church. We need to be a tarrying people. We need to tarry for others. We need to tarry in the altars. We need to tarry, tarry, tarry because that's what He's calling us to do. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel when he tarried with God. Genesis 32, 24 through 30, 30, excuse me, 32, 24 through 32 says, Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And Jacob, he's the man, and said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I'll not let thee go, except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, which means supplanter, deceiver. That's that's what he had done. And the man of God said, thy thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thy power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, your name. And he said, wherefore is it thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. When we tarry with God, just like with Jacob, Jacob the name Supplanter, what a name. Can you imagine? Hey, Supplanter, how are you? Hey, Deceiver, how are you? 
Think of that. Think of the context of the, his name. Names were very, very important then. How, just think of that. That's what he was known by for what he had done. But God chose to do something different in his life. He was persistent. He, he tarried with God. He, this was an a example of the type of shadow of Christ in the Old Testament. And he tarried with him. And he said, I'm going to change your name from supplanter. I'm going to make your name Israel, which means a prince of God, a name greater than those of the great men of the earth. He was a prince indeed that is a prince with God. Those are truly honorable and mighty in prayer. Having power with God, he shall have power with men too. He shall prevail. And that's what he did. And he gained Esau's favor again. He changed his name. And he not only changed his name, but Jacob... Now Israel changed, called the place Peniel, or the face of God, because he had seen the appearance of God, and he obtained the favor of God. He changed him to supplanter, to God, I'm the prince of God, let God prevail. He wants to change us from broken to whole. He wants to change us from sick to healed. He wants to change us from slave to free. He wants to change us from doubtful to faithful. He wants to change us from bound to free. He wants us to change us from destitute to delivered. He wants us to tarry with Him. And when we tarry with Him, He will change who we are. There will be a change in you. People will notice a change in you. And if they ask, you can just say, I've been tarrying with the Lord. And when He changes us, He also changes our position. Psalm 40, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He was tarrying. He was waiting. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. God changed his position. He was in a horrible pit. He was in the miry clay. But God changed his position. He said he waited on God. He tarried. He put his feet upon a rock and he established his going. Psalm 62 says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against man? You shall be slain, all of you, as a bowling wall. Bowing wall shall you be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. But verse 5 says, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Now, although they're doing wicked all around us, although we see wicked all around us, my soul waits upon God for my expectation, my plan, the plan he has for my life. Jeremiah 29, 29, 11 is from him. He only, this is the rock that David was put on. He only is my rock. He is only my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. He's wanting us to tarry. That's, that's the word that He's been putting in my spirit because I'm not sure that I've been tarrying. We get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in life. We get caught up in the news going on around us. We get caught up in all those things that just drag us down. And we, we have to live. We have to work. We have to, we have to do things. But he says to have a mindset of prayer continually. To, prayer should be continually in our mouth. And, and we can do that. We, not, we need to tarry in the altars with those who need prayer. And we also need to tarry throughout the week in our own lives. How do we tarry? Well, we pray. We seek his face. And we, as scripture says... We stand still and wait on Him. We get in His Word. That's how we tarry. We pray His Word. We believe. We, we, we get with brothers and sisters in Christ and believe with them. Psalms 46 and 10 says, Be still and know that I'm God. We have to wait on Him. We have to be still and we have to tarry with Him. Psalms 130 verses 5 through 6 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. 
and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Everything, everything within me is waiting for the Lord. Everything within me is waiting for the Lord. And David goes, or the psalm writer said, goes on to say, I say, more than they that watch for the morning, that's how much I wait on the Lord. When God says to tarry, we need to tarry. When we feel alone in life, we need to tarry. When we feel deceived in life, we need to tarry. When we are unsure in life, we need to tarry. When we need an answer to a prayer, we need to tarry. We need to tarry on the mountain. We need to tarry in the valley. We need to tarry when we don't even know what else to do. That's when we need to tarry. And I can assure you, just through my life, um, I'm 40. I've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost for, let's see, 24, 25 something years. I can tell you in my life that when we tarry and when we tarry with others, that the wonderful counselor will come down. The the prince of peace, he will surround. The mighty God, Jehovah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he will come down in the midst. The alpha who, who knows our beginning, who made the beginning. Who set us forth in our way that we should go. The Omega who knows the end. He knows every plan for me. He knows every jot and tittle for me. And every promise in this book. When we tarry they are all mine. Every line of it. Every word of it. They are all mine. And when we tarry we can stand upon his word. When we tarry with God I can guarantee you. Don't let anyone ever tell you that he won't show up. Because when we tarry, He will show up. Like that song says that Brother Stacy uh, sings from the McCamies. He's in the middle. Christ is in the middle of it all. We don't have to doubt. We don't have to give up. we got to tarry. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. That's my word to you tonight. Because that's my word to me. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. When God answers one of your prayers, you don't stop there. You just keep on pressing. When God saves your family just like He did mine, things that I tarried for for years and years and years, I don't. I won't quit praying for the lost then. I need to keep pressing even more. I need to pray for your loss. I need to pray for other loss. Keep tarrying. Keep pressing into God. Keep pressing into God because I'm going to tell you something. He'll show up and not only will He show up, He'll show out in your life. He'll do what you need Him to do. He knows every plan. He knows every situation that we've gone through. He's already been there. He's at your tomorrow. Keep on tarrying. Keep on pressing for the Lord. Praise God. That's my word tonight. Might be one of the shortest ones I've ever done but that's my heart tonight is that we keep Terry and and I I love it how the Lord just he he just allows me to share my heart with you what 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 I feel like I need to do more of and to seek his face not just for myself but for each and every one of you love you all tonight pastor Praise the Lord. David said, wait, I say, wait, I say upon the Lord. And he shall renew thy strength. If we'll just do like the man of God preached to us tonight. If we'll just tarry. Sister Jean, if you'll come. Piano. If we'll just tarry. If we'll just wait upon the Lord. He'll move for you and I. If we'll just wait upon him. I want you to stand with me all over the house tonight.